So I, I think that we need to understand this part of the Godhead body that is so important to us. Amen. The Father created everything. Jesus fulfilled and, and gave the gift unto us. But the Holy Spirit is the one that finishes what God has given unto us. So who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Uh, in many realms, in spiritual realms, religious realms, we have misunderstood the, the, the personage of the Holy Spirit. We've been taught that being filled with God is the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And we've been taught in so many other different ways that the Holy Spirit is not even for today. The Holy Spirit himself moves by faith. That's why without faith it's impossible to please him. And then there has to be a witness, and that's why the Holy Spirit comes, is that His Spirit bears witness with your spirit. What does He witness? He, he witnesses that what Jesus did for you is real. Yes. Say that, what Jesus, what Jesus did for me, did for me. What, I read what I read is real. It's real. Why? Because Jesus came in the volume of the book. So if you're not reading, you're not getting nurtured. You're not growing. You're, you're just codependent on man and not God. You just can't get this on Sunday. You just can't get this on Bible study night. This is a 24-7 God. That's why he made it so clear that you don't live by bread alone. Let me make this perfectly clear. You know, we take care of this thing called the temple or the body more than we take care of the spirit. We'll go to great lengths to make sure we look good outwardly. But in, inwardly is dead man bones. That's why he told Ezekiel, can these bones live? These bones, can they live? So we're to prophesy. Life. By who? By the Spirit of God. He says, speak unto these bones by the Spirit. That Spirit dwells within you. That's why it's so important that you become born again. Born again. Of what? The flesh. Of the spirit. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Everything that you are, everything that you have, everything you dress yourself with will never go with you. But there's one that will go with you. It's the spirit of the living God. Man, if we get this reality, if we understand who we really are in Christ and what he's done, is that we are exactly like him. But the difference in privilege is that we have to ask the Father in Jesus' name. Why? Because he's the finality. He, he finished everything for us. So then he is our revelation. He is our propitiation. He's our advocate. He's the man in the middle. But yet you have direct access. That's why he asked Peter the question. Who do men say that I am? Then he brought it to, the, to, brought it to a personal. One on one. And that's the same thing God is asking you today. Who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ. The anointed one. That's what the word Christ means. It means the anointed one. So then, in John the 17th chapter, he says that I'm in them and they in me and I in you. We are all one. One. That's why in the book of Philippians, they were, he was able to say, I count it not robbery to be equal with God. Why? Because he's given the same spirit. So are you. The same spirit that dwells in Christ Jesus now dwells within you. That's why he came to show you what true baptism was. In the book of Matthew, 
Jesus Christ himself came as man, but he had to be baptized so all things may be fulfilled. How many? All things. So the baptism in the Spirit of God is so important. When did the baptism take place? When you became born again. Not something you have to learn. Not something you come to the altar and cry out, Jesus, Jesus, and, pray, and cry in tears. False doctrine, false religion. When is Jesus? He's, when is God? Right now. He's a now God. So whatever you need, wherever your destiny is, God will be there with you. So in Genesis, the first chapter, he shows us that he didn't make us in the flesh. He made us in spirit. That's right. 126. Let us make man in our image. Have you seen God at any time? Why? Because God is spirit. And then John, John tells us that wherever the spirit listeth, let it do. Have you ever seen the wind at any time? But you see its movement, don't you? That's the same way the Holy Spirit moves in one's life. So then there's no greater one in here but Christ. The anointing. Now you all have different talents, different abilities, different stations in life. But you all are significant to the body of Christ called the love center. Amen. Now the body and all its anatomy has to what? Function together. Yes. And the only way that we can function together is by the Spirit of God. That's why God said He already knew what was in man. That's why He didn't trust Himself totally to you. That's why you always have to submit. Somebody say submit. 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 That means that you must humble yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen? You must take on the humility of Christ. That's what Christ did. He was the greatest man that ever lived. That's right. But then he humbled himself and became a servant. That's right. He didn't just wash your feet. He cleansed your whole body, your whole being. You are whole. You are new. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You become new today. You become right to death. Yes. See, then the reason why you don't move in the power because you don't understand the authority Jesus. of the spirit of the living God that dwells within you. You don't earn this thing. That's right. Of course, you come to church religiously. You don't earn that. No. It's freely given. Yes, it is. So man fell. So God said, My son, I'm bringing in another covenant. That other covenant that he's talking about is spiritual. Everything else up to that point in time was done from the outside. Now it's done from the inside out. You understand? The greater one, say that for me, the greater one lives within me. And how many times have we quote that scripture? Greater is he that is in me than he is in me. Then you've got to prove that. God said, prove me here with the see if I don't open you up those windows of heaven and pour you out. How many of want a blessing? Oh, for sure. Then prove him. Amen. Prove him. Prove that he's first in your life. Prove that he is number uno. He's better than your wife. Better than your husband. Better than your children. Better than your job. Better than your circumstances. Prove him. See, because he states that you got to take up your cross and follow him. Then you have to be like Moses. And Moses is proven to us that without the presence of God, we can do nothing. Moses said, I will not leave this place without your presence, except your presence goes with me. So God gave you a better covenant. He sent you another comforter. Yes, he did. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Where does he dwell at? He dwells within you. 
When the devil tries to disdain you, the devil tries to whisper sweet nothings in your ear. Knowing, know this, that you have the words that can move mountains. Yes, Lord. Thank you. You can tell the crooked thing to be made straight. You can tell things that are in your life to be removed. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to be somebody's doormat. You don't have to be used by people. You don't have to be used by this world. Why? Because if God is great, then you're great. Amen. If God says that you can do all things, then do all things. That's the whole deal. Is that you got to get in Him. He's already in you. That's right. Come on now. You got to get in Him. We're too busy doing other things. More things are more important. Well, I got this to do. I got that to do. I got to make more money. I got to pay bills. Well, God said that without my spirit, and that's why I'm putting, I'm paraphrasing, without my spirit, you can do nothing. That's right. So everything else that you're doing without moving in the spirit of God is under your own power. Wow. All right. Say so. That's why the Lord did not want man to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why? Because then you become another God. Yes. Wow. There you go. Do I need to say that again? Yes, sir. Yes. Because we receive knowledge about God's word, then we become our own God. Can I put it that way? Yes. Something has to change. So the devil gives you finances, he gives you money, and he even gives you hurt to take you out of the will of God. Wow. 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 But God says, no weapon. No weapon. I, I said, no weapon. No weapon against you shall prosper. That means it may come, but it ain't going to stay. That's right. Because we can't stand in the presence of God. I wish that you would get the presence of God. God says that I am. I can do what God said I can do. I can speak his words. I can feel his feelings. Why? Because his grace is sufficient for me. Thank you, Lord. Not too many amens of that. Amen. So he says, I'll send you another comforter. I will not leave this place except thy presence go with me. Check this promise out. A promise that he stated to you even while you are in your own power, even while you are suffering, even when you've sinned, I will never leave. Yes. Oh, I will never leave you or forsake you. See, you know, sin separates us. That's why it's so hard for us to get back. Come on now, man. You blame it. it. Why? Because we're using our own wisdom and we're allowing the things that we don't know or the oppression of the devil to keep us from being who we really are. We are sons. What was Jesus? He was a son. Are you a son? Yeah. Then you need to thank him for that. Yeah. You need to give him glory for that. Yeah. So that, that baptism of the Spirit is so important. And it's important that you understand it. That's why Jesus himself did that for you. So that you would see the importance, the significance of being baptized and being filled with the Spirit. <clears throat> So because it's a father and son business, God wrote the contract and he spoke it out loud. He said, hush, be quiet. This is my beloved son 
hear and do what he says. Yes. I'm not just paraphrasing. Yes. That's what he said. Yes. In other words, just like a father and son would have a business, mm -hmm. the father passes that business on to the son in the earth. Mm -hmm. And then the son passes his contract to you. Yes. He says, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Listen to his final words. Yes. That was his final words. All power. Where? In heaven and in earth was given unto me. Now I give it to you. Amen. Put your fingers in there. He's talking about you. Amen. All power. That's why you have the keys of authority. That's why it's so important for you to understand your sonship, the authority Amen. that you have, along with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not by my power, nor by my might, but by my spirit, yes. saith the Lord. Yes. Amen. Now, Elijah was a man just like you were. Mm -hmm. But if you read in James 5, 16, but yet he was able to defeat 400 prophets of Baal. Yes. 400 prophets of Baal. 400 enemies against you. Yes. And against your Christ, That's the right. Son of the living God. That's right. yes. That's when he said, you call on your God. On your God. Yes. And I will call Oh my God. And we'll see. Yes. We'll see. Yes. See, because without faith, it's impossible to please him. Impossible. Amen. Now faith is the substance. Yes. Somebody say substance. substance. See, the substance comes from your innermost being. Come it comes from your spirit. Yes. It just can't come from your intellect. Yes. It must come from the true man. God created. God created. I mean, but check it out. 
Before he placed man in the garden, he made everything good for him. Yes, he did. Nothing was wicked. No. Everything was good. Everything was, all he had to do was just dress it and keep it. And guess what? That still stands for us today. Is that we should dress it and keep it. Look at your body. Your, your, your inner man is the garden of Eden. Now what you have to do is dress this thing and keep this thing. So when trials, tribulation, sickness, and affliction, lack comes in your life, dress this thing. How do you dress it? You dress it with the word of God. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Keep speaking. Yes. In my flesh, 12 no good thing. I buffet my body. Now Paul buffet his body. He beat it. How did he beat it? With the word of God. Pow! So through the word of God, you receive the ministry of reconciliation. Use it. Reconcile yourself. Reconcile your community. Reconcile your school. Reconcile. Reconcile. Re what does that word re means? It means redo. Amen. Come on. Redo. We need a redo. Yes, we do. You saw something today that hasn't happened in a long time. It's a time of refreshing. Yes. Say so. <coughs> a time of change. The spirit was welcome. Thank you. Yes, Lord. I'm praying that the day comes where I don't have to stand. The Shekinah glory. The Shekinah glory will just come in this place. And all we got to do is say, Lord, holy, holy, holy. Oh, my God. John 14. Uh, verse 16. We'll start there. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Mm. How long? Forever. forever. So that's that promise is sealed to you that he will never Amen. give you no safe for safety. Amen? Amen? Wow. Who's praying for you? Who prayed that you would receive? The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus prayed that you would receive his spirit. Is he a man in the Well, then, if that's true, first epistle, I mean, second epistle, John, first chapter, or second chapter, I'm not sure. Seven. No. He said, Physician, lay hands on thyself. Why? Because God is telling you, already said in that text, I have not given you the spirit of fear. But of love and power, and of sound, and the very next thing he says, lay hands on yourself. Yes. Be healed. Heal yourself. I dare to try God. I dare to walk in the light as he's in the light. I dare just to trust him and by his word. Man. So Jesus prayed. And he said, I'm going to pray to my father that he would send you another comfort. I'm not with you, but it's far better, far greater that I go away. Right. If Jesus would have never ascended, if he would have accepted what the people wanted, wanted not to go away, then you and I would be sitting here today. But because of that, we are able to be in his presence. Yes, Lord. We are able to be identified with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. All those that you died to who you were, are you living a resurrected life? Come on, man. What does that mean, a resurrected life? That you can walk on the earth and you can teach God's word, that you can have signs and wonders following you. Come on now, Signs and wonders are supposed to follow them that believe. Are y'all believers in here? Amen. Are y'all believers in here? Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Whoa, 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 whoa. So he's not like the devil. He's not going to lie to you. He ain't going to bring up your history. Amen. Why? Because Jesus cleansed you. There's no more sin in your life. Do you understand that? No. Why are we allowing sin to defeat us? He said once and for all, he died for your sin. Yes. Amen. You and that which you were, you're dead to that. You're now alive unto Christ. 
Slowly. Who the Son is free and he. And where is the Spirit? Where is the Spirit? Where is the Spirit of the Lord is? Don't get to get free in this place. Get free. Amen. Amen. Please read. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will never. You know, you know, you, nobody's seen him, but you know, you know his presence. Yes. How many of y'all know his presence? Yes. Come on, give him glory. Yes. Give him glory. He said, he breathed the fresh, John 20, that's what I said. He breathed the fresh in them so they could do and complete what they want and they needed to do. Let's go to the 26th verse. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He shall teach you, and he bring all things to your remembrance. And let me say something about teachers. Although that you have many teachers, you have but one father. And I don't care how bad your natural father was, good or bad, you, you always pick up some of his traits. Why? Because your father is your teacher. Send you the best schools and everything else. Still, you fall by the wayside. You wonder why? Because you got to have that relationship. And he'll give you a relationship that passes your understanding. Not as the world has, but such as he has. He gives unto you, which you that again. But the comforter, oh, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He's not gonna let you forget. Amen. He's long suffering. 
you go out and you come back, you go out and you come. But yet, he's just like this, the father of the prodigal son. He's waiting for you with arms wide open. Amen. Amen. Ready to put a new, new, yes. new wardrobe on you. That's right. You want, you want. Put shoes on your feet. Yes. Put a ring on your finger. Yes. And say, this is my son who is now returned. Let's make a party. Amen. Holy Ghost Father. Amen. 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 Don't you want that to happen for you? Amen. Man. Wow. How beautiful is that? Let's, let's read the 27th verse. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. What does that word peace mean to us? Shalom. 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 Nothing missing. Nothing So when he gives you back that peace, you're right back where you belong. Right back. Please finish. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Notice what he says. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Why? Because it's only temporal what the world does. But what God gives you lasts forever. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. Amen. Then, you know, I like what he says because he seals us with the Holy Spirit. Seal. Once you seal something, you, you know, only one that sealed it should be able to open it. Amen? I mean, back in the medieval days, they had a what? A seal. Mm -hmm. If anybody broke that seal, then it was one what? Not valid. That's right. See, but you've been made valid. Yes. You've been sealed yes. with the Holy Spirit of God. Yes. Man. Can't nobody break that seal because they can't open doors that God opens. They can't close doors that He closes. Only God can do that. Man. Now, now that, that other text says that, uh, that it gives you peace, not as the world gives. Check it out. Jesus is the Son of God, right? Amen. So in Matthew, the fourth chapter, what, is, what does the devil do? He tempts Jesus, so you don't think he's going to tempt you? Huh? You don't think he's going to come after you? That's right. Come. I'll be the son of God. Turn these stones into bread. Yeah. Yeah. He already knew who he was. That's right. Yeah. Guess what? He knows who you are too. Yeah. But don't be like Adam and Eve and sell your birthright mm -hmm. for a morsel. Yeah. That's what happens when you sell your birthright. Then you have to live according to the dictates of your flesh. <coughs> And when you're walking in your flesh and it separates you from the body. You want to be separated? You don't want to be a part of the, of the function, the empowerment of God to change and affect your world for Christ. Your calling is greater than you think it is. It's not just about playing that keyboard. It's just not about you performing that wonderful dance. Right? It's not just about audio, but it's just not being janitor, not just doing this. That's service, man. But what you've been called to do is what he has done. Amen. Check the calling out. <laughs> Greater works than these shall you do. Wow. He isn't just speaking to just one person. No, he's speaking to all of us. Why? Because his spirit is able because of what Jesus did to be in every last one of us. That's why there's no distance. You could never reach heaven with your flesh. It has to be done by His Spirit. That's the only way He's going to heal you. is by the Spirit of truth. God with a lot. He already knows. He knows what you're going to ask before you even pray. Well, let me see how I can trick God. You can't trick God. Why? Because He made you. He knows what's in you. He knows, he knows what's going on in your life. But He wants you to know who He sets free. Amen. 
Let me try to get through this. Um, there's so many of us that have not moved in the power, the authority of God. So our main concern should be to nurture the spirit man. <clears throat> He's plain and states in that gospel that we just talked about when Jesus was tempted. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Check this out. When you got saved, how did you get saved? You heard the word, word of God. God. Is that right? Yes. So the word of God had the anointing enough that the empowerment on that word was enough to change your life. Yes. Amen. And what is that word? That word is the spirit of the living God. But he won't force himself. You've got to invite him in. Come on, man. So guess what you need to invite him in again? A fresh, a fresh into your life. Amen. God has already made provisions for our flesh. He knew that we were not perfect. I believe in the Gospels, he says, or the Epistles, he says, I've already forgiven you for your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins. Hallelujah. Y'all don't believe that. Thank you. Thank you. Do, do you really? Thank you. I've already forgiven you for your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins. Now, does that mean that you continue to sin? No, you're supposed to change your ways. You know, uh, some people say, I did a 360. No, you're supposed to do a 180. Uh, and go like this. And I'm like, hey, my sins are looking down. Satan's got your money gone. Yeah, yeah. Can I get a witness? Sound off. You know that. So I'm your DI today. I'm your drill instructor in, in the boot camp of the Lord. Praise God. So that, that's what this is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Check, check this out now. 2 Corinthians 4 7. It says that we in this earthen vessel, the ecstasy of that power, the treasure, be of God and not of ourselves. Cast down but not forsaken. Mm. Outward man decaying every day, but my inward man yes. is renewed day by day. So then how many of y'all are renewing? Yes. How many of us are renewing? Yes. Oh, we're waiting for Sunday. Yes. But guess what? Monday's on the way. Yes. Tuesday's on the way. Yes. Wednesday's on the way. Thursday's on the way. We gotta get through it all, not just wait till Sunday. That's right. Yes. He's just not a Sunday God. That's right. So my question is why we are not moving in the spirit. Why are so many people dying? Why are so many people in our families messed up? Why is our neighborhood Messed up. Why is our nation messed up? Why is our city and our town messed up? Because the body of Christ has not joined itself and become one in spirit and in truth. There was a woman, the daughter of Abraham. Watch you, the son of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Luke 13, please. Uh, I, I want to finalize in this text. Luke 13. Praise God. Uh, let me see. I forget what verse I want to begin at. Bear with me a second, would you? Amen. Yes, 11. Praise God. 
And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. So when you're in sin, there's a spirit of infirmity. Got that, right? So the woman, she's bowed down, she can't look up. So the devil has somebody or someone oppressed and they can't. So the spirit of infirmity is on you. You can't look up. You can't even see God because of the thing that's going on in your life. Who did that? The devil did that. Right? Let's read. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Amen. 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 There's an old song I used to like to sing. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul. Something really happened. And now I know. He touched me. And now I'm no longer the same. He touched me. I go through a whole lot. But he touched me. And now I, I'm no longer the same. I don't have to have a pity party. I don't have to have somebody else because misery loves company. I don't have to depend on man, but I only depend on Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend of all in me. In Jesus' name. It's the Holy Ghost all over me right now. Somebody's broken. Somebody's bent over. Come on now. But if you just let him touch you, oh, please read. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. And then, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. Come on. Oh, yeah. Give God glory. Oh, yeah. 